I like that. We're embedded again with the recon unit connected to the 20th Panzer Division for the fourth time. We'll see more color private footage as the unit moves on and then takes the strategically important Belarus city of Vitebsk. As we often do, we'll then take a look at the original campaign atlas to get a macro view of Army Group Center's positioning. But this time we'll dig in deeper by introducing the tactical symbols used in the situational maps and reading excerpts from the German High Command War Diary for that day. A number of the other units that I've done videos on were involved in the operations that I'll be covering today, and I suggest that you take a look at them. My intention is to put as many of these original sources, like pieces of a puzzle, together so that you can get a better overview of the whole, from micro to macro, and to do that without boring you to tears. At the end of the video, I've added part of a clip that shows some pretty raw footage. Leaving it completely out makes no sense, to see the uncensored version, go to the new website, military1945.com, create an account, and sign in. Eventually, there will be a full video on demand channel associated to that website. If you like the way that I combine primary sources to create these videos, please remember to like the video and subscribe to the channel. You won't be disappointed, I promise. During the first week of Barbarossa, the 20th Panzer Division acted as a tip of Colonel General Hoth's 3rd Panzergruppe Pincher rapidly advancing east. On June 28th, in coordination with Guderian's 2nd Panzergruppe, the Pinchers came together just east of Minsk, creating the Bielestock Minsk Pocket and entrapping 20 Soviet divisions. During the next few days, the unit was able to refit and actually had a bit of time to relax. I'd guess that this cameraman was interested in both the lack of Russian men working the fields and the presence of young women. By June 30th, the Pocket's guard units had managed to beat off counterattacks by the Soviet 20th Mechanized Corps and the 4th Airborne Corps which were trying to break out, and the fate of the Soviet divisions was sealed. On July 1st, the 20th Panzer Division was relieved from pocket guard duty by the 12th Panzer Division, and the division immediately set off advancing east towards Bessarina and the Duna River. On July 7th, they crossed the Duna between Ula and Komachino and advanced on Vitebsk. This is a photograph of Vitebsk taken by a German soldier from the western bank of the Duna River in the summer of 1941. Here we are looking at the situational map for July 9th of 1941 for Army Group Center. The 20th Panzer Division was part of Panzer Group 3 that was led by Colonel General Hoth in the 39th Motorized Corps along with the 7th Panzer Division, the 14th Motorized Infantry Division and the 20th Motorized Infantry Division. The difference between mechanized and motorized infantry divisions is that mechanized units were equipped with armored personnel carriers or infantry fighting vehicles for transportation and combat. Motorized infantry simply meant that the soldiers were transported by trucks or other motor vehicles. As I read excerpts from the German High Command War Diary and mark locations on the map, pay attention to these headquarters designations. In the War Diary, the daily entries related to each army group are divided into two sections. The first section gives an overview of the most important events of the day, 
for the entire Army Group. It was an honor for units to be mentioned here. The second section describes what's happened to each individual Army or Panzer Group in the Army Group. If there's been little or no change to the unit, then this is also stated. Here's the entry from July 9th, 1941 for Army Group Center. Panzer Group 3 had finally hit Abwehr front. Panzer Group 3 has broken through the enemy defensive positions along the upper Duna. Vitebsk is securely in German control and the rail bridge into the city has been taken undamaged. Enemy resistance around Vitebsk and Seno has diminished. The advance of the 2nd and 9th armies towards the front is going as planned. The 4th Army are unchanged. For Panzergruppe II, being led by Colonel General Guderian, the 24th Army Corps and the 46th Army Corps are unchanged. The 47th Army Corps of Panzergruppe II is approaching the Dnieper to the northwest of Kopis. The official war diary stating that Vitebsk was firmly in German hands on July 9th is not entirely accurate. Unit commanders often communicated optimistic situational reports, and so did the German High Command. This is an original 1941 military issue map of Vitebsk. On the 9th, part of the 20th Panzer Division advancing from the northwest, and the 20th Motorized Infantry Division directly from the west advanced on the city. Part of the 20th Panzer Division had been sent north in a blocking movement to counter heavy Soviet troop concentrations around the city of Gorodok. By 1500 hours, the advance had reached this line. By 1700 hours, the west bank of the Duna River was in German hands. However, progress had been slow. Soviet artillery fire was effective, and carefully prepared reinforced positions that were well camouflaged had proven difficult to overcome. Shortly thereafter, the 20th Motorized Infantry Division managed to capture the rail bridge intact and build a bridgehead on the eastern bank. This was significant because the other bridges had all been blown by the Soviets. Heavy fighting continued throughout the late afternoon with the Soviets attacking the bridgehead with heavy tanks in battalion strength. The defenders, armed with little more than light infantry weapons, were able to hold on. By nightfall, the fires burning in the city had spread considerably, which endangered the attacking units, and made it necessary for the Germans to move the majority of their forces back out of the city. Vitebsk certainly was not yet securely in German hands. This is a photo of the 51st Nebelwerfer Regiment supporting the crossing at Ulla. These are soldiers of the 20th Motorized Infantry Division entering Vitebsk. Here we see soldiers from the same unit then fighting for the bridgehead on the eastern bank of the Duna River. This incredible photo was taken in early evening just before the German retreat was ordered. Almost exactly three years later, during Operation Bagration, the Soviets would retake Vitebsk. I've added additional Soviet footage from this collection to military1945.com, which couldn't be shown here. Go take a look. Thanks for watching.